So the Weather at Six is a sound installation that's based on the sound of the bells, uh, of the carillon bells at Wesleyan. What I ended up doing was m recording the bells, analyzing the bells, and resynthesizing them so that I could make virtual bells. So I could have a bell that sounded just like the carillon, but was played rather differently. For example, it would be possible to play rapidly with very, very fine control of dynamics and uh, uh, things that are just fundamentally difficult to do on a carillon. I then used weather data, the history of high and low temperature and precipitation for each day of the year for the previous hundred years, has a source material to specify how these bells would be played on each given day. So each day, in a sense, provides a portrait of the weather for the previous hundred years on that day. What I discovered when I began thinking about this and looking at the data is this kind of wonderful fact that if you actually look at a graph of the average temperature, or if you look at the graph of temperature over the years, it's completely unclear that there's any pattern. And even if you average six months at a time, it's only if you average for full years that you begin to see any uptick at all in average temperature. So the piece runs at six o'clock, which is this time between events on campus. So my thought about that is that it would be a piece that people would encounter unexpectedly and kind of probably not very intentionally. And that um, hearing it, you might at first think somebody is playing the carillon and then gradually it would become clear, for example, from that very sustained bell sound that no, you, that you're hearing something rather different. It would be an analogy to the experience of noticing change in the weather. Now, the way the piece is deployed as this thing that runs at six unannounced kind of uh, in a murky fashion means that when, if you happen to be within earshot, you have to decide to give it your attention. And that moment when you decide to give something your attention is to me a very uh, important and profound exercise of perception sort of a moral exercise. So the business of giving your attention, whether it's giving your attention to global warming, whether it's giving your attention to that homeless person, whether it's giving attention to um, the, you know, the terrible cost and human suffering of war, um, uh, any of those, it can map into any of those to some degree. And that that's when I feel like a piece is really functioning as a piece. It's not that anybody is going to say, oh, I can think this way, I can think that way. Rather, it's that that piece, juxtaposed in a certain way, will suddenly be inflecting in, in, uh, in that other fashion. And so that that's why there's, a, um, I think, a very delicate balance in any artwork that's trying to engage in a direct fashion with um, issues of uh, science or of politics or technology for that matter.